saying, sermon's called Party Time. So I thought we'd have a little clip of Wayne's World and uh, uh, his idea of what that might be. Okay, that's all the time we have for this week. Until then, good night! Party on, Wayne! Party on, Garth! It's Wayne's World! Wayne's World! Party time! Excellent! Party on, Wayne. Party on, Garth. It's Wayne's World, Wayne's World. Party on, party time, excellent. Okay, so that's a little glimpse of the party culture, I guess. And, uh, yeah. I mean, what do you think? When you think of a party, a lot, a lot of us have different impressions. Some of us hate parties, and some of us just love parties and thrive. I mean, in the era of COVID, there have not been very many parties. You're probably possibly missing uh, missing that some of you and uh so let's let's think a little, a little bit about it today what maybe that that was mike myers and uh, dana carvey uh from back in 1992 uh that did wayne's world and it became kind of a cult classic and that was you know party on party time excellent uh might not be your idea of a party um but it was so i guess it was theirs oh yeah so parties sometimes they're, they're scary that you know people if you're if you're kind of more introverted you're like i don't want to bother with that <laughs> if you're extroverted you can, can't wait for it you just long and look look for it and uh you you, you really miss conversing and and uh, yeah, encountering new people and having great conversations and all that kind of stuff you know what well, parties have a lot of other aspects it tends to be some drinking and some and a lot of food and sometimes dances and and, and stuff if you throw a party tends to be a lot of work so you have to really like them and want them and and feel they're important um and but they're a lot of fun are they <laughs> for some people they are uh, lots of times and sometimes they're disastrous uh, you know people get into fights uh you never know what might happen so uh so so no matter we keep on having them um and we have them for all kinds of of occasions you know we just it doesn't doesn't seem to matter what uh, what the occasion is we um was i going to mention this oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i'm going to tell you about that later um we we just keep on we keep on doing it it seems to be part of uh, part of human culture pretty much across the board now the big party is often the wedding reception don't you know uh you know a lot of our parties are you know might be a dozen people or 20 people or something like that but when you get to a wedding party and those are, those are a bit more ad hoc. You throw them together at the last minute sometimes. Uh, a wedding party can be planned for a year or more. And uh, it's a, wed a wedding reception. And it's, it's, it's much more formal. But, you know, it'll be, there'll be speeches. There'll be huge platters of piles of food. And there'll be, there'll be music and dancing. It's all planned out, especially nowadays. And it could be much more likely to have at least 100 people or, or more. Um, and, and this has been the case for thousands of years. And it seems to be nearly universal, like uh, cultures, you know, as missionaries have traveled the world and as, you know, we, we've kind of seen inside the various cultures of the world, um, we've discovered that wedding parties are pretty much standard fare in, uh, in every culture. You know, what, what's going on? This, why are they slaughtering this pig? Oh, it's a wedding. Oh, okay. And, uh, and that's what's going on. Um, so it's a nearly universal thing. I don't know. I'm not an anthropologist, but... Uh, it's it's huge it's big and that's the backdrop for today's passage jesus gets invited to a wedding in cana of galilee now that's not very far from where he grew up nazareth it's about 15 kilometers so it says he and his disciples where is it here on the third day a wedding took place at cana in galilee jesus mother was there and jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding uh so you know that's <laughs> it's probably a really really big party and uh we we know already so there's 12 disciples jesus and mary that's 14 um probably if if mary was invited as well as jesus probably his brothers and sisters there's another at least 20 and they, those are just a handful i mean then there's the family of the bride and groom families of the bride and groom probably the whole community was there maybe the surrounding communities came as well it was big uh, now be, you have to remember that in the Middle East then and now it's it's uh, a culture that's kind of uh, a, a lot of 
the way things are done, it's kind of an honor versus shame uh, culture. You have to, at all costs, avoid shame, and at all costs, uh, promote honor and respect. And hospitality is one of the, those key things that they're, they're famous for. So uh, in Jesus' day, um, if there was a girl born in your household from day one, you'd be thinking, got to get her married off to the right guy. <laughs> so you would be saving towards A, the wedding, and uh, B, the dowry. So uh, that's common. And, and then these weddings, um, the, the scholar that we used to read, whose name escapes me for the moment, but uh, he has spent a lot of time in the, in the Middle East. He, his, uh, his thoughts about the length of weddings in Jesus' day was probably between 7 and 14 days. They weren't a one-night affair. <laughs> they were a multi-day affair. So you have probably hundreds of people uh, over many days. And, and, and it's the culmination of uh, this, this young woman's uh, upbringing. Um, and, it, you know, it's, been, it, it's an honor-shame culture. Everything has to be just so and just right. Um, so the father of the bride has a lot invested in this as far as his own honor and his own, you know, his own pride. So in our story... We're not sure how far in they are. They're not in that far. It says, uh, when the wine was gone. So this is about to be a, a total disaster. I mean, the father's going to be shamed, and, uh, you know, people are going to be disappointed, and, um, the, you know, the wedding could be could be infamous for, for, for messing it up. And so Jesus' mom, Mary, gets wind of this and heads, heads over to Jesus, and they have a funny conversation. It's recorded here it must be true because it, it's puzzling you know uh, he says they have no, no no more wine she says to jesus you know like pointedly and jesus says woman why do you involve me my time has not yet come which is you know a curiosity to the scholars uh but she doesn't doesn't pay any attention she just says, turns around to the servants do whatever he tells you <laughs> she's kind of take take taking charge here because you know uh Jesus said, didn't say he wouldn't do it. He said, my time has not yet come. So, but his time has come in this sense. So basically, Jesus ha has them uh, uh, fill up these wine jars, the, these vases that are for the Jewish ritual of purification. Each one being between 20, is it 25 and 30 gallons? Uh, between 20 to 30 gallons. So let's say 25 gallons on average each. Um, six jars, 25 gallons, let's do the math. That's 150 gallons of water, roughly. Pours it in, and he says, okay, uh, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. So uh, they do, and when the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine, he did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, so so generally people would, you know, they would have the, the, the B-grade wines kept back. To people that were getting a little bit, A, they had a fair bit to drink already, so they didn't taste the difference and they, or they didn't care. Um, and uh, so, so he does it. He says, this is the first of his miraculous signs Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. They, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it was the beginning of them understanding of who he was and what, what he was capable of. Um, so Jesus saves the day. Uh, this day that could have been a day of shame was a day of great joy. And a party that could have been a disaster it turned out to the most talked about party of all time. <laughs> really, because it really is. Uh, what other party is is renowned throughout many cultures? You know, people that don't really know much about the Bible, I've heard about, you know, turning water into wine. Comedians make jokes about that. It's just part of our culture and part of our world. And that this is this famous party that uh, that we're, we're, we're looking at in the, uh, looking at here today. <laughs> okay, so I'm just checking my, my feed here. It's good. Um, now, a few points about this story uh, that I think are important. <clears throat> and point one, I'm not sure it's the most important point, but it's an important point. And this is this this probably strikes just about everybody that bumps into this. The second chapter of the Gospel of John. This does not seem very religious. Make, 
making wine for a party, for a wedding party. Um, okay, that just seems kind of weird, kind of out of place, but is it really? Uh, it actually is very fitting with all the Gospel of John, uh, which portrays Jesus as, uh, you know, kind of way outside the box as far as the religious life of Judaism. So uh, I read a book a bunch of years ago, and some of you may also have read it. I've recommended it. It was by Bruxy Cavey, who's a pastor in Southern Ontario. <clears throat> and he wrote a book called The End of Religion. And, you know, he may have been a bit hyperbolic uh, in, in his expression, but he's basically saying that Jesus came in not to start a new religion, but to, uh, but to, he became as the culmination of the thing that all religions are kind of seeking for. And especially the Jewish religion. Um, I mean, just, just look at this. Uh, how many of the religious leaders of Jesus' day would have, you know, been at a party and supplied the wine? Um, so he's turning the tables on on expectations and stereotypes here, and let alone use the jars that are used usually for the ritual of <laughs> purification. This is a big deal in the Jewish culture. <clears throat> Go back and read your laws of Moses, and every time you turned around, you had to you had to wash. You had to wash, you know, before you ate, and you had to wash, you know, if you were uh, unclean in some way, menstruating, or touched a dead animal, or, or whatever. And there was always need of this purified, uh, blessed water for for the ritual of purification. Jesus has them fill it up and turns it into wine. Um, <laughs> so so Jesus is he he is the answer to. Uh, the things that that religion points toward he's the reality um he, and he he isn't he, this is a tricky question are we religious if we're christian are we are we spiritual but not religious sb sbnr um i mean we have lots of religious trappings but at the heart of it we are simply getting to know god and jesus has made that possible and and walking with him the way we're meant to as created uh, created children of God, uh, forgiven through Christ's blood, um, living in hope because Christ rose, and this is built right into us by by God's Spirit. That sounds religious, but really it's simply life to us. So, mm, so, so that's a bit of the message that he, is right here at the beginning of the gospel, and it, it carries through the rest of the gospel. Um, it Jesus was obviously interested in people simply enjoying themselves. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so that's point one. Point two, Jesus is marking himself out as the Messiah. Um, you know, Jesus in many ways told people, I put that in quotation marks, that he's the Messiah, the long-awaited Christ. The, Christ is the Greek, Mashiach is the, the Hebrew or Aramaic. <clears throat> yes, it's Hebrew. Um, and they had a lot of expectations about what, what it would look like when Messiah showed up. And when the messianic age broke in, and uh, th this was this wine thing was clearly one of those. Like so, if we hark back to I Isaiah chapter twenty-five, and this would be a well-known passage that the Jews of Jesus' day would regard as messianic. Um, so Isaiah twenty-five verse verse six: <clears throat> On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples. A banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. So it's definitely a, a messianic age prophecy in the in the in the hearts of of the Jewish people. And Jesus does this thing right in the middle of it: <laughs> uh, a feast of the best of meats and the finest of wines. It says a banquet of aged wine. <laughs> now. Aged wine is good wine. Now, in Jesus' case, it really wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't, uh, um, say this was the year 30, it wasn't, you know, from the year zero. But uh, uh, <laughs> what would we say, you know, oh, it's a 27 Chardonnay. Uh, you know, no, this was like, it was, it, it was made at three o'clock and, and partaken of at 3.30 kind of thing. So it was really new wine, but it tasted like the best of aged wines. So this this was implicit to them that that it, it was a sign that indicated that he was the Messiah, the, the long way. and and the disciples believed in him, so in other words they believed that he was the Messiah and this is this is why it's saying that. Um, 
Now, third point is why, let's think of for a second, why do people party? What is the significance of partying? Why, why do we do it? We, have, we do it for all kinds of uh, uh, reasons, but partly it's just to, to, uh, to, make, to build community, to build friendship. That's kind of why I, uh, I, I wanted to do this song, you know, I found a friend, oh, such a friend. So our communi community is built for us around Jesus, but everybody's looking for community. They need friends. They need fellowship. They need comradeship. And, uh, you know, we, we, we turn ourselves upside down, you know, trying to keep and, and make, make friends and keep them. And, and parties are one of the ways that we do that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, or celebration. So another reason we party is to celebrate because we like to celebrate whatever the reason might be. You know, did someone graduate? Let's party. <laughs> Did someone have a birthday? Let's party. You know, did someone get married? Let's party. Uh, so we have parties for, for all those kinds of reasons. At, when I was back at back in university, um, my first year especially, it shocked me because I went to U of, U of T, University of Toronto, and uh, it, it was a bit of this Wayne's World culture, you know, party, uh, party time, excellent, except they didn't really need very much cause to party, I, I noticed. Like, they would party on Friday because it's Friday! And they would party on Thursday because tomorrow's Friday. And they would party on Wednesday because it's hump day. You know, it's the middle of the week. So pretty much every day was party day. And there was some reason to celebrate. Um, maybe except for Monday and Tuesday. So most of the days of the week, it was quite a weird culture. Um, so that, that's, that's a couple of reasons that, that people party. And maybe the third is escape. Escape. It, uh, it takes people away from... The, the struggle and the, the trials of, of our everyday life and sometimes loneliness. Uh, so we can kind of forget about those things and forget about, um, forget about work, you know, forget about uh, personal conflicts and just kind of enjoy ourselves. So that, that's another reason for it. And these are, you know, in a way, these are our interests as Christians as well. I mean, making friends, building community, that's what the church is. The church is all about, you know, one anothering. Uh, you know, be tender-hearted toward one another. Forgive one another. Uh, pray for one another. Um, uh, there, there's, I forget. I, I think I published and uh, offered up a list of all the one one another's that there's like I forget dozens of them in the New Testament, implying that we are about we are about being a community, the children of God, uh, learning to love each other and live with each other and and uh, and help each other. Uh, you know, so so Scripture is full of that. Celebration. Well, that's yeah. We are we are celebratory. That's why we sing so much. We're worship is simply celebrating the joy we have that God loves us, that God made us, that God cares for us, that Jesus died for us, that uh, that uh, we we have a home with Him in heaven. Uh, you know that He's going to make a new heavens and new, you know we're 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 full of joy even in the midst of trials because we know uh, hope. Uh, we we have hope within us. We even rejoice in our sufferings because suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. So, yeah, we are a, we are a celebratory bunch, and worship is simply celebration. Uh, and escape. Well, you may say, well, we shouldn't be escaping from reality. Well, yeah, so a different twist on escape. We are escaping from the pains of life in many ways because uh, in Christ, we are escaping from sin. We are escaping from guilt. We're escaping from fear, uh, and we're escaping into the, you know, you know, the negativities uh, that drag people down in life, into a world of healing and grace and love and acceptance. So yeah, so these are our interests. Plus, you know, we're pretty keen about food and music and fun and, and dancing, just like everybody else in the world. Okay, so all that being said, we should definitely party more. No, I'm not talking about the excesses that people in our world party. Uh, we, you don't have to do that. Many of us party without, you know, getting drunk and without you know, doing drugs and all kinds of other carry-ins carry -ins on that people do that, you know, are overboard, excessive and harmful usually often. But just, you know, having fun, getting together, providing food and, and uh, food and drink and, and maybe games, whatever. I think we need to do that as a way of meeting our neighbors, of making friends, of building relationships. We should throw more, more parties.
Now, not all of us can do it. You got to be able to afford it, I guess. There are a lot of work, <laughs> not just the not just the throwing of the party and the inviting and the prepare preparation, but the cleanup can be a, you know, and it's exhausting. But it's a way of blessing people and of sharing our joy. So we are on a mission to spread the good news of Jesus. And I really think the parties have a part to play in that mission. Jesus is trying to tell us something by his behavior at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. So, as Wayne would say, party on. And as Garth would say, excellent. Let's pray.